In our previous video, we've set up an async task to handle threaded operations on a different thread, specifically network operations. Then we grab some data from uh, the internet and then we parsed it into JSON. In this video, we are going to take a deeper look at that async task. We're going to explore the methods on pre execute, on progress update, and a method call we can make called publish progress. This is all going to be used to show a dismissible dialogue to the user or something where the user understands that an activity is occurring in the background. This dismissible uh, dialogue is something called a progress dialogue. So these are all the ingredients that we're going to use in this video, as well as one thing we get to use about once every two years, and that is the modulo operator, which is the percent operator. So let's get started. I'm in the GPS of plant screen of my existing project, and I'm specifically in the async task. Now, one of the methods I mentioned we get to use here is one called on pre-execute. We're not currently overwriting this. We're currently inheriting this, but we want to overwrite it. So I'm going to start typing on pre and notice it gives me a little template and then it says, OK, here's the on pre-execute method. Let's go ahead and leave the super call there in case there's any logic from the super class that we need. Now we're going to say set up a progress dialog which we should do if we're doing a long running activity and we want the user to be able to cancel. So I'm going to say new progress dialog. And then we need to pass in, let's see, alt enter to, to uh, uh, import that. We need to pass in a context object, which would normally be just this if we're in an activity. But because we're in an inner class of an activity, we have to refer to the enclosing activity with GPS plant dot this, and now we're good. So that's going to instantiate our new progress dialog. I'm going to hold Control Alt and press F, which is going to uh, create an attribute that will store this progress dialog object. So I want to store the uh, I want to store the attribute. Let's say uh, in GPS plant. That's fine, and just like so. And just a bit of magic and we're ready to go. Now the reason why I made that, that an attribute, not a local variable, is we want to access this from different locations, from different methods essentially. So we need to make it an attribute. So progress dialog, let's say set cancelable. And that's true. That's one nice thing about having a background thread is that we can still respond to user interface requests. So we can cancel a long running process if needed. Uh, something very friendly to do for the user. Uh, progress dialog, and then we're going to say set progress style. There we go, set progress style, and then we'll say uh, process dialog dot style horizontal. That works for us. So do we want it to be a horizontal bar or how do we want to do it? So um, plant progress dialog. Oops, sorry, well, uh, progress dialog. And then we're going to say set max. So essentially, we're kind of setting a, a range of data. So we're saying 100 units is when we're complete, when we're done. So kind of like a percent, something out of 100. OK, uh, a couple more things to go here. Progress dialog. And then we're going to say set message. And then we're going to say uh, downloading plant names. But we know it's not a good idea to hard code text in our program. So I'll say extract string resource downloading plant names just like so. Make that a little bit easier so it's now in strings.xml. Okay, the next thing we want to do is make a button. This is essentially a cancel button. I mentioned a nice thing about threading is that we can allow the user to cancel a long running operation. So to do that, we need to show a button uh, that the user can press to cancel. So we'll say progress dialog, and then I'm going to say dot set button. And we're, I'm going to say dialog interface, and we'll say dot button underscore negative, which indicates something like a cancellation. Uh, then we'll say cancel, and then we'll say new dialog interface dot on click listener. Now this one is really tricky because if you take a look, we're in a method call here. The first thing we're sending is a flag to say uh, make it uh, basically a cancel action. Now we have the string cancel. We know we're going to extract this into strings XML like so. But the final argument is what gets tricky. The final argument requires a listener that will act when the button is clicked. 
And what we're doing is we're declaring and creating the listener in line within this method call. So you see a whole bunch of goofy symbols happening. The method call begins here on line 381 and it ends on line 386. And then you see some kind of interesting operations happening in the middle. For example, we're declaring a method within a method call, which is really, really weird. Um, you could do this several other ways, but this is a kind of a common approach. You just have to understand what's going on. So the good news is the on click here is actually straightforward. All we have to do is say dialogue. Uh, actually, let's see, it's going to be dialogue interface, that first thing. So dialogue interface, let's just rename that to dialogue and let's rename the int i here. We'll name it to which. So now we say dialogue dot dismiss. So all we're doing is we're getting rid of this progress dialogue. Now we probably should do something to kill the thread as well. Um, not going to worry about just for sake of brevity, not going to worry about that here. So what we're doing, the on pre execute method invokes before doing background. So I'll snap a breakpoint. We'll snap a breakpoint right down here. And we just know that this is going to be invoked first. Now we have to handle updating progress. So for uh, updating progress, I need to override one more method. And this is going to be a method called on progress update. Notice as I start typing, it gives me a little template and allows me to complete that. So we leave the super call and now I'm going to say progress dialog dot set progress. And we're going to pass in value uh, zero, value zero. Okay, what in the world is this? Well, remember long ago when we made this async task, we had to give it three generic parameters. First, the search term we're passing in, the data type for that. Third, forgive me going out of order here, what gets returned from our background thread, which is a list of plant ETOs. And then in the middle, we have the progress update indicator, which is the data type that we're using to update our progress. Now we go down here to on progress update, Note that that takes an integer. If for some reason we made this a short, then this method would accept a short, not an integer. Remember also the three dot ellipsis means that values is actually an array because we could call this method by passing in a comma separated list of integers. So that's why I have to say, okay, get out the first element in that array and we're going to set the progress on the progress dialog to be that value. Now what this is going to physically do when the user sees it is if you think of a progress dialog like a horizontal bar, if we know that our max is 100, if this were 25, we would see one fourth of the bar consumed or one fourth of the bar going. If it were 50, we'd see half of the bar. 100, we'd see the whole bar going across. So this is just saying, where do we want the bar indicator to be? Now we need to make a call and we need to actually say, okay, I want to update my progress. Now that's the tricky part because typically a progress update is going to happen in the background thread. You see here is our background thread called do in background. Now I have to take a little bit of poetic license with this one because at this point in our, in our background thread, we have already received our data here in all plants. But one thing to consider is that we really should save the data to a local data source before we use it to populate the autocomplete text. The reason being, a good user experience guideline says any type of autocomplete text should be sourced from local data, not data over the network. So I'm going to, I'm not actually going to save the data locally, but I'm going to pretend that I am. In other words, I'm going to kind of stub something out. So iterate over all of the plants we fetched and place them into the local database, which again, we know we're not really going to do, but I can kind of type this out with a for each loop. So I do for each and then I say uh, plant DTO plant colon, and then we'll say all plants. So what we're doing is we're iterating over this collection of all plants and each time we iterate over a plant or each time we iterate, we're saving a plant into a local variable and the local variable is this guy here called plant. So uh, now what we would do is we'll say, okay, act like we're saving to the database. Now we know there are almost 5,000 plants, so we don't need to update on every single plant. We don't need to update status on every single plant. What we can do is say, you know what? I'm okay if we update that status ind indicator 
uh, about 4% at a time. So show 4%, 8%, 12%, 16%, so on and so forth. Now, how many 4% are there in 100%? There are 25 4% and 100%. So we need to do a little, bit, a little bit of math here. First of all, let's keep track of our plants. And I'm going to say before this loop starts, I'm going to say int plant counter equals zero. Okay, now as I loop, I'm going to say plant counter plus plus, which is simply just adds one to the plant counter each time we loop. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that status update where I update the progress bar every 4%. And remember, we decided there are 25 4% and 100%. In other words, 100 divided by 25 equals 4. So let's think of the math here. I'm going to have to say if plant counter modulo, modulo is the percent, whoops, Modulo is the percent indicator, the percent symbol. If plant counter modulo all plants dot size, and then we'll say like so, divided by 25 equal equal zero. That is a really confusing formula, and I can tell you it took me many, many tries to get it right. So all, so all plants modulo, first of all, what does modulo mean? Modulo means remainder of division. So we're saying what's the remainder of plant counter divided by the size of the plants divided by 25? If there's no remainder, that means we've hit a 4% boundary. I can keep explaining that. It's not going to make much more sense, honestly. I encourage you just to kind of look at this formula, this algorithm I've put up, dissect it on your own, decide what it's doing. But essentially what this means is this unit of code is going to get hit um, 25 times as we iterate over this loop. So it's going to get hit exactly 25 times. And those 25 times are going to be every time we've consumed another 4% of the collection that we're iterating over. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is update progress because we've hit one of those 4% boundaries. So I say publish progress. And then we say plant counter times 100 divided by all plants size. Once again, a kind of confusing uh, algorithm that we have here, but plant counter, how many, how many plants have we accessed so far? Multiply it by 100, divide it by the total number of plants, and that's essentially going to give us a percentage. Once again, that percentage, uh, the way we did this modulo math, is going to be 4%, 8%, 12%, so on and so forth. So yeah, it took me quite a few tries to get that just right, but I was finally satisfied that I have it right. One last thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to dismiss this dialog when we're all finished. So in the on post execute method, I'm going to say uh, progress dialog dot dismiss. One other thing, I set a breakpoint here in this modulo operator so we could watch the bar grow one piece at a time. So we'll do a bit of debugging here. Let me go ahead, save and publish. And let's take a look at what this looks like in the debugger. Now the debugger has started. We're on the onCreate method. And we see that we're doing what we normally do, which is start up this async task, the plant search task. I go ahead and let that play. Now we go to the onPreExecute method. And by the way, we're still in the UI thread. Our screen is still rendering, so we see nothing on the screen just yet. But let's go ahead and walk through this. We set our properties, we set our cancel button, and then we show the progress dialog. Now we go to do in background, and do in background runs on the background thread. So take a look at our user interface. Notice that it's starting to show the downloading plant names. We have a horizontal bar, and we have a cancel option right there. So let's watch what happens as we iterate over do in background. We go through and we do our normal network operation of our search. We got our 4,909 plants in return. And now we're going to walk over this part where we're iterating over each plant. And every time we, we check off 4% of the plants, we're going to go into that published progress. Notice the first couple tries, we're not going into published progress. So line 375 doesn't get hit. It's going to take a little while. Let me go ahead and choose F9. When I choose F9, Publish Progress gets hit. Well, I have not executed the line yet, so you see downloading plant names still does not show any progress. But let's just see where we are. 
If I look at plant counter, which remember that's increasing every time that we loop, if I look at plant, plant counter, I see it's at 196. Well, what percent is 196 of 4909? About 4%. So, so far it looks like our math is pretty good. So I choose F8, and as soon as I choose F8, notice it says 3%. There might be a, a little bit of rounding there, but you can see that this bar is starting to grow. Let's choose F9 again. And this time, our second trip around, what's plant counter? 392. 392 is about 8% of 4909. Again, might be some rounding involved, but as soon as I choose F9, let's take a look, and you see it went from 3% to 7%. So F9 again. And again, it's processed about 200 records, now up to 11%. F9 again, and you see where this is going, up to 15%. As a matter of fact, what I'll do now is I'll take the breakpoint off, and I'll very delicately uh, try to show both at one time. I will F9, and then very quickly take the uh, emulator back over. So there's F9, and you see at this point, it has finished up. Uh, now we're just about done with the do and background thread. So I choose F9. And now I go to on post execute. On post execute takes those plants and it sets them into our autocomplete. And then as soon as I choose F9 this time, it's finally going to dismiss the progress dialog. So F9, and sure enough, the progress dialog is gone. Now I want to try one more example here, and that is what happens when I hit the cancel button. So what I'm going to do is I have a breakpoint set on the dialog.dismiss which happens on this onClick handler. This onClick handler is matched up uh, to the cancel button that appears on our progress dialog. I'm going to go to our plant JSON DAO and just make sure I've taken off breakpoints. Go to the network DAO, make sure I've taken them off from there as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to GPS a plant. I'm going to return back to the do in background and simply snap a breakpoint on this published progress. And now let's try it one more time. So I just need to go away from the screen and come back. I come back to the screen. We see that the onCreate method fires. We get our progress dialog, and there's our progress dialog. Now we're in the published progress. And if I choose F8, we see this is in the do and background thread. So this is still running in the background. And then um, about every 200 entries, I get to that published progress. Now what happens now, you see I'm already at 3%. What happens now when I hit cancel? I hit cancel. Let me go ahead and choose F8 here a few times. And we'll go back to our main thread. I, I hit cancel. I go to the main thread and look what's lit up. The dialog.dismiss. So notice the progress dialog is not complete yet, but I've hit cancel on the UI thread. So what happens when we choose dialog.dismiss? I choose F8 and guess what? The dialog goes away. So it is possible to dismiss that dialog before our processing is complete. And I do, just do want to reinforce, we also want to cancel the thread that's currently running. Usually it's not just a matter of getting that dialog box to go away, but it's also a good idea to kill that thread. So I'll go ahead and choose F8 a few more times. And at this point, we're essentially complete. So a quick look, but a look nonetheless at how to do a progress dialog with an async task in Android. I hope the video has been helpful. Look forward to seeing you in the next. Thank you.